unto the son of David, the king of Israel. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dearly beloved brethren, from the beginning of Lent until now, we have been preparing our hearts by penance and self-sacrifice. Today, with the whole church, we herald the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem and was welcomed as King with palms and shouts of praise. Today, we greet him as our King, though we know his crown was a crown of thorns and his throne a cross. Therefore, I invite you to follow our Lord this holy week from his triumphal entry through his suffering and death to the glory of his resurrection. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with thy help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby thou hast given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end.
Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, Amen.
and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully granted we, walking the way of the cross, may find it not other than the way of life and peace. To the same my Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. the Lord who forgiveth all our sins, his mercy endure it. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
in his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah, the 52nd chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. Behold, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. As many were astonished at him, his appearance was so marred beyond human resemblance, and his form beyond that of the sons of men so shall he startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told, them they shall see, and that which they have not heard, they shall understand. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or comeliness that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation who considered that he was off cut of the land of the living, for the transgressions of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When he makes himself an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Here endeth the lesson.
Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every he should bow in heaven on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that he was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. And they said, What is this to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put an innocent for them to put into the treasury, since they are blood money. So they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field, to bury strangers in. Therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled that which had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave him for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, 
He made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testified against you? But he gave them no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor wondered greatly. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up, up to them. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much over him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the people to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all answered, Let him be crucified. And Pilate said, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood, See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him. And plaiting a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spat upon him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. This man they compelled to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. They offered him wine to drink, mingled with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. The two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, saying, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple, and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of 
God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests, with the scribes and elders, mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the, all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with the vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. of the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom and the earth shook and the rocks were split the tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place. They were filled with awe and said, Truly this was the Son of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As we celebrate our Lord's triumphant entry into Jerusalem, that Palm Sunday, he was hailed as the crowds as the Messiah, the King. And we also ponder at the same time as we hail him as our King, the mystery of the cross, which lays at the end of that first Holy Week. I'd like to reflect, reflect briefly 
I promise, on a few of the dramatic contraventions of our expectations, three of them. Perhaps irony is the best word, but instead of giving us a chuckle at the end, it somberly helps us unfold the layers of the meaning in this glorious story. The first dramatic contradiction is between the king that people were expecting to see in this triumphant entry into the holy city and the king they actually got in Jesus. Matthew tells us that this whole event even fulfilled the prophecy foretold back in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. And the quote that we're given, of course, talks about the king riding into the holy city of Jerusalem on a donkey. And you think, well, that fits. That's what happened. If you go back and you look through the whole chapter, what do you see in the context? It's all about a warrior king returning in triumph with the spoils of battle. In this chapter, we get a whole litany of Israel's surrounding neighbors, their enemies, with details about how, how God will deliver them, each in turn, into his hand, conquer them. And of course, it was typical of the great powers of the ancient world to have a, a grand parade in the home capital after great battles, showing off all the loot, the priceless stolen treasures, the prisoners of war and the slaves, no doubt the people waving their branches and shouting Hosanna that day were on the march to what they believed would be a battle with the Romans. In fact, Hosanna is a battle cry. It means, Lord, deliver us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And yet when Jesus arrives in the holy city, he entirely ignores the Roman soldiers in the citadel. Instead, he turns his attention to the Jewish temple next door. He chases the money changers out of the temple courtyard. For those prepared to risk their lives in a battle with the Roman soldiers, it must have been quite confusing and a letdown. But Jesus was continuously facing people's desires and expectations for a worldly Messiah, which he was not sent to be. That was not the kind of Messiah God gave us. Very interestingly, with this whole triumphant procession in mind, in 2 Corinthians 2.14, St. Paul makes an analogy of Christ's redemption as a victorious battle. And as a result, the Lord is parading us, his spiritual conquest as his conquered slaves into the holy city of the new Jerusalem. But we are willing servants. We joined him in the battle. And Jesus came not to fight a material battle, but a spiritual one, not an earthly one, but a heavenly one. And in that sense, he did indeed conquer all the nations. The second dramatic contradiction was between Jesus and Barabbas. Pilate says to the crowd in Matthew 27, 17, whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Christ. Now that name, Jesus Barabbas, was not in the text that we read today. It is found in some early Syriac manuscripts and scholars have had a long suspicion that it is most likely the original form of the text. Of course, there are many ironies in this story. The first is that name, Barabbas. Not only, if that's true, do they have the same first name, but the name Barabbas, bar Abba, means son of the father. Of course, our blessed Lord claimed that God was his father, that he is the only begotten son of the father. And the irony doesn't stop at the name. Remember, the temptation put before Jesus again and again and again throughout his ministry was the same temptation that this other Jesus, Barabbas, had succumbed to, the quest for worldly power obtained through violence. We're told in John's Gospel that Barabbas was in the Greek elestes, which has been translated robber or bandit, but the word has a wider meaning 
probably means rioter, insurrectionist. In fact, we read in Mark and Luke that he actually was involved in a riot, which seems to be an attempted insurrection. And Luke mentions specifically that Barabbas committed murder in the riot. In short, he was a freedom fighter, and I'm sure many people would argue a patriot. No wonder that Pilate would have much preferred to release for them Jesus who was called the Christ, who not only refused to join in any revolt, but was telling people things like, love your enemies. I'm sure the Roman soldiers were comforted when they heard that. <coughs> Barabbas, though, was exactly the kind of leader that people were hungering for and craving. Not the one they needed, not the one God provided, but the one they wanted. And so in this exchange, the guilty was set free while the innocent was condemned in his place. But that's exactly what Jesus came to do. That's what he does for all of us. He takes our place of condemnation for sin and sets us free to live a new life in God's kingdom. And this is the invitation that Jesus offers us at the cross. Let me suffer for your mistakes. Take my innocence and my freedom in exchange. And then the third dramatic contradiction comes when Simon of Cyrene was drafted into service to carry Jesus' cross when his strength had failed him. If we look back in Matthew chapter 10, Jesus had summoned the 12, commissioned them for his service with power over unclean spirits, sending them out to minister in his name. And then at that point, Jesus talked about some of the hardships that they were going to face, the things that were involved in his service. And in verse 38, Jesus said, he who does not take up his own cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And then a little later in Matthew 16, verse 24, right after Peter had confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus predicted his own passion and told them, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Jesus had talked many times about the disciple being like his master. That's what he trained them for. That's what he equipped them to do. And when Jesus fell on his way to Calvary, was Simon Peter there to pick up the cross for him? Did any of the other 12 close disciples carry his cross? No. Was it because they were carrying their own crosses? No, it, would be, it was because they were nowhere to be found. And instead of Simon Peter, it's another Simon, a complete stranger from northern Libya, Simon of Cyrene, coming into town for the festivities, who carries the cross of Christ. And for him, it's a transformative experience and a great privilege. And Jesus was not crucified between his two disciples, between Peter and John. Instead, he was crucified between two criminals, two lestes, probably fellow henchmen of Barabbas in that riot. But Jesus came for the guilty. Jesus came for the stranger. Jesus came to capture our hearts for the gospel and set us free from the power of sin and death free to serve and reign with him in the kingdom and be paraded in his triumphant procession. But his robe was borrowed, his scepter was a reed, his crown was made of thorns, his throne was a cross, his subjects mocked and scorned him, King of the Jews. But we will glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ for he is our salvation, our life, and our resurrection. Through him we are saved and made free. Amen.
Please stand. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Be God and for all worlds, God and light of light, very God, very God, be God and not made, be God for substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. God's men for our salvation came down from heaven and was required by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified for us. Under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven. And sit on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end, and I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord. And you are all life, who are seated from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking us thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and our hearts are sorry our mysteries, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, 
who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and forgive you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you with all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You may be seated. Well, good morning. Blessed Palm Sunday to all of you. It's glad to see you here. Glad you joined us for worship. It's also a joy to have uh, Elise Dion Choi filling in at the organ this Sunday and next. Today is the day we collect our Lenten fasting fund. Make checks to St. Francis with fasting fund in the memo. If you forgot, just bring it next time. It goes toward ministry in our companion diocese of northern Malawi and one of the poorest regions of the world. Today is the last day to sign up for Easter flower donations, so you can do that on the lectern that's in the parish hall. Next Sunday, remember, we have our annual Easter potluck, um, so cake will be provided. We're looking for other things, entrees, veggies, and rolls, uh, so I hope you will join us for that occasion. Also, if you're able... Yes? Yes. Set up and clean up. And get in touch with Angie if you want to volunteer um, anything beyond bringing and helping set up and clean up. Uh, let's see. Please join us as much as you're able for our services this Holy Week, especially the Tritium, the three sacred days, the most important time of the Christian year. Tuesday is the Chrism Mass at St. Vincent's Cathedral in Bedford. Uh, consider joining us if you're able. If you've never been to that occasion, it really is a glorious and moving experience. Also, think about the Monday Thursday watch. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet for that as well in the parish hall. We have a birthday that's coming up this week of Malachi. Right. We'll come down here. Let's pray for you and give you a blessing. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him, and keep him from spotted from the world. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up as you fall, and in his heart may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless the Lord. Kind of makes me feel weird to say, watch over thy child, O Lord, who is taller than I am. <laughs> you may remember Father Richard Daly, who was here back at the beginning of February. Um, he reported that yesterday he was involved in a car wreck up in Texarkana uh, in a head-on collision of someone else going the wrong way down the highway at 50 miles an hour. Um, <clears throat> miraculously, though, he and his wife survived uh, without any broken bones. They have a lot of bruises and cuts. In fact, he had to be cut out of the car, uh, but do give thanks to God for his safety and his recovery. We welcome those joining us online. We're glad you tuned in and hope you'll tune in again. We invite you to come worship with us in person if you're local. Of course, you can look us up and learn all about us at our website, stfrancisdallas.org. We offer the holy sacrifice today to the praise and glory of Almighty God in thanksgiving for his many blessings and with special intention for the people of the parish. I invite you to bring your intentions along with your hearts to present to God upon his holy altar today. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Thank you. 
very meet right and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee O Lord the Father Almighty everlasting God because on the wood of the cross thou gavest mankind salvation that so whence death arose life might also rise again and that the foe by a tree hath conquered, by this tree might be overcome, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and praying. to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou with thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may there, by his one oblation, of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it institute, and in this holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Hear us, merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receive in accordance with thy faith, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of this most blessed body and blood. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given break it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and went 
gave it to them, saying, Drink ye, for this is my blood and sacrifice, which you say for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly be partakers of this holy communion. May worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids who have gone before us, sealed with the seal of faith, and who sleep the sleep of peace. To them, O Lord, and to all that rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant the abode of refreshing flight and of peace. To us sinners, also thy servants, who hope in the multitude of thy mercies, vouchsafe to grant some part and fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, and with all thy saints, within whose fellowship we beseech thee to admit us. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father, almighty world without end. Amen. Let us pray. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Deliver us, O Lord, we beseech thee from what evils past, present, and to come, and at the intercession of the blessed glory of the Virgin Mary, Mother of God. That of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, the Major, and all thy saints, favorably grant us peace in our days, that by the help of unavailing mercy we may ever both be free from sin and safe from all distress. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who is in the unity of the Holy Ghost, live with the reign of God. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, 
so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. and reigns with the Father and the Holy Ghost ever one God. World without end. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Blessed are they that are called for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Lord, I pray
Look graciously on thy faithful people, we beseech thee, O Lord, that calling to mind again the beginnings of their redemption, they may abound more and more in the fruition of the gift whereby they have been refreshed. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. 